I'm by myself. I'm here in a place that I can't leave. And I am uh, watching her do something I should have been there for. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I'm so glad you're back with me again today. I'm back with my friend, Martha Krejci. And if you missed Mondays and Wednesdays episodes, go back and listen. You will be greatly encouraged. She talked about her testimony on Monday and then yesterday, talked about how they came into homeschooling, um, the the impact that our movie, Schoolhouse Rocked, uh, the homeschool revolution had on her and her family and how the Lord used that to kind of push them off the fence and into the world of home education and family discipleship and just their testimony, what that's looked like for their family. And God's doing amazing things with them. Um, we'll put a link to her video because it was so funny when she, after it, it was like the next morning after she watched the movie she went on her YouTube channel and she was like, you guys need to know about this movie and about homeschooling and talked all about it. And so that that was how we found each other. Um, so we'll put a link to that because it's really fun to watch her video and, and just kind of that first like awakening of, oh, now it's all making sense to me. Uh, so so we'll link that in there as well. Um, and it's so funny. She ha- She's the author of this book. We're going to talk about this today. It's called The Home-Based Revolution. It came out in 2021. And I said, you know, what's so funny is that our movie came out in 2021 and her book is called The Home-Based Revolution. And our movie is called Schoolhouse Rock to the Homeschool Revolution. And just that they both came out the same year, both have very similar titles. Um, and, and God is, you know, there, there is a revolution um, that is going on in families today. And I think oftentimes it's because the Lord is just getting a hold of his people and just saying, look, <laughs> like we need change and people are waking up. Finally, and homeschooling is part of that. Um, working from home is another revolution for sure because there there are so many opportunities to be able to work from home and to help support your family financially. So we're going to talk about that today. But before we do, I want to say thank you to our sponsor, BJU Press Homeschool. If you're looking for a great curriculum, you can do online learning, you can do parent based, uh, parent led learning, whatever works best for your homeschool. They have something for you, whatever grade, whatever subject, BJU Press Homeschool will help walk you through your homeschool journey so that you can do it successfully. And they will help your child to develop a biblical worldview and encourage a love of learning. So check them out at bjupresshomeschool.com. Also, thank you again for those who continue to support the Schoolhouse Rock ministry. We are so thankful for you. If you would like to support us financially, you can do that through our website, schoolhouserocked.com. Click on that donate button and you can make a one-time donation or a monthly donation. Um, It is such a blessing to us. And that is really what keeps us going and being able to do what we do. Uh, We love being able to serve the Lord in this way. And you are a huge part of that. So thank you for those who continue to support us that way. Also, if you've not left a review for this podcast, would you do that uh, by going to whatever platform you're watching this on or listening to it on and leave a review, let people know why they should listen to the podcast, why they should watch the videos and uh, just share with them, um, you know, what the Lord is doing through the Schoolhouse Rock ministry. We would greatly appreciate that. Uh, Martha, welcome back. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to talk about this because I continue to see posts from moms. I talk to moms and so often moms are like, I don't know what to do. You know, we're struggling. We need to bring in some extra income. And I know that there are so many different ways to do that. And so God has really gifted you in a lot of ways, Martha, to be able to do this. And I would love for you to kind of jump off with telling your story, which you probably will anyway, about how you ended up coming home and working from home. Why why did that even happen in the first place? And then let's get into some of the the meat of how this has worked for you and how you can help others to bring in some extra income. Yeah. My story of, of coming home was kind of dramatic. Um, I, I worked at GoDaddy. Okay. So I worked at GoDaddy for a little over five years in leadership. So I was kind of in the digital marketing world. Um, and so as I was there, I thought I was going to be a lifer. I thought, you know, I'm climbing the corporate ladder. I'm doing the things that I'm supposed to do. And, you know, I'm getting pay raises and all these things. And I'm like, this is my life. This is what I'm going to do. And uh, until one day, right, uh, I was sitting in my carpeted cubicle. It smelled like the 60s. I think we're all familiar <laughs> with this place, right? I had my my little, like, uh, um sayings pinned up to the carpet that kind of got me through the day. I had a picture of my family and everything next to the computer. And uh, I remember one day I got 
uh, a video from my husband while I was at work, which is just odd. He doesn't usually uh, send a lot of messages, let alone a video while I'm at work. And I'm like, okay, what's going on here? So I thought maybe there was an emergency and I needed to see something. And anyway, I, uh, I look down at the thumbnail, you know, you see the first uh, screen yeah. of the video. And I, I looked down at the thumbnail and it was just, it was like my worst nightmare. Um, I couldn't push play on the video because you can't watch videos on the calling floor at GoDaddy. And so I had to go to the bathroom <laughs> to watch this video, which is just so glamorous. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so I went in there and uh, there was nobody in there. And I just, I was stood at the sink and uh, pushed play on the thing that I knew what I knew what I was just about to watch. And um, anyway, the very first screen of it was my daughter on her feet. Um, mm. And she hadn't been before, you know, like not unassisted. And yeah. uh, I was about to watch her do something that I was not there for. And um, I pushed play and it was just, it was, it was her taking her very first steps, right? Mm. And uh, she even did, she like added some, some whipped cream to the top of this whole thing. And she did this, like, as she's walking, she took two wobbly steps and then she just goes ah. <sighs> she just did uh. that and i'm like oh my gosh how adorable and it as i watch that and then she looks at her daddy you know that's holding the phone and she just like gives him the biggest smile like she's just so proud of herself yeah. and in the same moment i see her and i'm so proud of her i'm just like beaming right and then i look up at myself and it was reality hit me that the the light from the phone is on my face, cold ceramic tile behind me, that I'm by myself. I'm here in a place that I can't leave. And I am uh, watching her do something I should have been there for, in my opinion. I should have been there yeah. for. And um, I, it, I went into a straight panic attack at that moment. I, um, I my left arm went numb, which is fun. Um, <laughs> but I had everything was blacking out from the outside in. I just like my heart was racing. I tasted metal. I'm like, am I actually having a stroke right now? But um, as all of that happened, I was just like my brain, everything that I was was just like, I can't do this. I can't yeah. keep do. I cannot continue to miss these things. So the thing I kept hearing over and over in my head was, um, was, are you okay with missing this? Mm -hmm. Are you okay with it? Because I believe that we keep coming around to things in our lives, right? Yeah. The, the fork in the road, so to speak. And we make our choice and it's like a choose your own adventure um, right. in those, those books, right? And you're going to go to this other chapter if you chose this one thing. And, yeah. um, and so I, I, in that moment, I had to choose. I was going to make a choice about what I was going to do. Well, here's the deal. I was a mom in corporate America and um, most moms in corporate America know that you just don't have sick time to use because whenever a yeah. few hours drops, you use it because right. you've got a kid. <laughs> That's yeah. what happens. Um, and I think fundamentally, I mean, my belief is that fundamentally we're not supposed to be away from our families. Yeah. I think, I think we were not, you know, we were not created to, uh, to live these lives that the world has created for us. Yeah. Um, we were created to, to steward our families. We were created to, um, to, to know God and make God known through our families, through our relationships, through our real life ministries. That's how, that, that's what we were created to do. And what I felt at that moment was, I kind of call it a God squeeze. We mm -hmm. get squeezed in different moments where it's like, that doesn't feel good. And it's right. like, it's the, like, maybe you should be doing something else. And, um, and so in that moment, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to quit my job. <laughs> I went back and I sat at my desk because I didn't have any sick time. I literally would have lost my job if I left. Um, and so I went back and I sat at my desk and I worked out the remainder of my day, which was like three hours that I had to mm. sit there. And I felt like an entire, like a caged animal. Yeah. And in those three hours I was doing my job, but I was also 
plotting. Yeah. I was, I was already thinking, what am I going to do? I need to do something else. What am I going to do? And, um, and so I, you know, I created this solution of, of what I could do instead of working that job. But on paper, I look like an absolute fool on Mm. paper. Uh, I had already brought my husband home from his job because I was making so much at GoDaddy that that's why he was taking the video of Nora taking her first steps. Um, Also, I held the insurance on my family, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And my in-laws lived in the same house with us as well. So like they, you know, we had just bought a really expensive house that allowed both of us to, you know, have kitchens and and whatever. And so all of that was our situation. So we owe lots of money on a really expensive house. I hold the insurance. I pretty much make the money for everybody in the house. And yeah. now I'm saying I'm going to quit my job. Yeah. <laughs> and so my husband is the way that I describe him is he's kind of, he's the guy that holds the string to my balloon. I'm uh-huh. the balloon that's like, let's do this thing. And Mike's right. like, yeah, but bills and things uh-huh. and, you know, and, uh, and so I imagined that when I went home and told him I was going to quit my job, that he was going to hyperventilate. He was going to mm. freak out. You know, um, this is before he had come to Christ. Right. So he did, he couldn't even rest in that kind of right. Right. Peace. We'll just trust the Lord. Yeah. He's, he, you know, there is no God. So what are we, it's just right. us. We got to figure it out, you know? And so, um, so on my way home, <laughs> I did what I think a lot of us do. And I, uh, worked out a conditional logic argument. I was like, if he says this, I'm going to say this. Mm-hmm. If he says this, I'm going to say that. If it, and, and so like I had worked out. And so whenever yeah. I got home, that was about a 15 minute drive home. And so whenever I got home, I went upstairs, put my keys in my purse on the, um, on the counter. And I looked over at Mike and I was like, uh, I can't do this. I'm going to quit my job. And uh, I didn't allow him to get to spiral out yet. Cause I said, <laughs> I have something, I think we're, you know, here's right. what I'm going to do instead. <laughs> and, uh, and I explained, you know, my concept of what I wanted to do instead. And, uh, and then he said this, and remember, this is before he's a Christian. Um, he said, Martha, if you don't do this, you're not only doing yourself, but everybody around you a disservice. Wow. And I was like, what? Cause that's <laughs> what not did like, you just say that. Yeah. I knew, I knew that was, I knew that was not Mike. I knew yeah. that there was, there was, there was something else coming, you know, there was yeah. something else happening there. Um, cause that was not Mike. That was not at all. He would have been on the floor. And so when I heard him say that, I was like, okay, this isn't just a thought of mine. This is something I, I literally have to do. Like I need to do yeah. this. And that was February of 2016. Wow. And um, it's been a whirlwind. It's been yeah. crazy. Um, God has used it in so many amazing ways. Um, yeah. And it's just been, it's, it's been, it's been amazing. It's been amazing so far. So that's, that's when I quit my job and we just sort of bobbed and weaved until we are. You know, it's so interesting as you're talking about that um, I'm not sure if I've shared this um, part of of my testimony before, but when it was August 2nd, 1989, um, it was the year before my freshman year in high school. And I went to summer camp, Christian summer camp at Hume Lake Christian Camps. And there was a speaker there. His name was Dave Moore. And I remember him talking about bogus or bona fide belief. And it was basically like, you know, do you believe because your parents believe or do you actually take ownership of your walk with the Lord? And so he was talking about our walk with the Lord and how important it was for us to walk hand in hand with the Lord personally. And I remember him giving this analogy during that talk about how as Christians, you know, well, he was talking about with um, young children, you know, and and he had a couple kids and he said, you know, when my kids were learning how to walk, he said, they would take a couple steps and then they would fall down. And he said, a good parent, you know, is one who is right there with them. And they'll say to them, you know, oh, get up. Let's try this again. Let's take a couple more steps. And they cheer them on. And he said, that's what the Lord does with us as our heavenly father. We, as Christians, we take a few steps and the Lord is there to pick us back up and and walk hand in hand with us. And we move forward. And as I'm relating those stories together, I'm thinking what a beautiful picture it is of even homeschooling. 
because you were so distraught over having missed her first steps. But Martha, it was so much more than her actual physical steps. Yeah. It was her life. Like, how is she walking through this life? How is she stumbling and falling through this life? And now you you get to be there with her as her mama and her dad gets to be there too, to help her through this life as she stumbles, as she falls, and you pick her back up and you say, okay, we're going to do this together hand in hand. We're going to walk through these trials together. And I just think it's so neat how the Lord, literally you missed her first couple of physical steps, but Martha, you have not missed your daughter growing up because you've been able to be home. You've been able to, you know, you've had the privilege of working from home. And what's so interesting to me is most dads, I don't think would have had their heartstrings tugged at like you did because it's different. It's different for a mom than it is for a dad. You know, dads are warriors. They're the workers. They're the ones who go out into the field and and plow the field so that they can bring food home, you know, for, for their families. And and many dads work from home. I mean, my husband works from home, you know? Um, So whatever the Lord puts on them and however they're part of that family, it's just a different relationship that moms have with their kids and the need to be with them. So we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I want to dig really deep into what does that look like to be home and be able to work from home so that we can be there to pick our kids up when they fall and to enjoy those steps that they take throughout life. We'll be right back. We want to thank all of our sponsors for making this show possible. BJU Press Homeschool, CTC Math, Apologia, and Summit Ministries. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Visit the show notes for links to these great companies and thank them for supporting the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. We are back with Martha. Um, Martha, let's talk about what this can look like in a very practical way. Again, you've written this book, The Home-Based Revolution. And you guys, this is a really small book and and, and it's yeah. powerful. It, that, that's what I love about it. I was like, I love that you didn't write a 300 page book yeah. because moms don't have time to read a 300 page book. Like this is a book that that is so powerful and the few words um, that are written in it, but it is so concise and you really give some good um, instruction on how we as people can work from home, whether you're a mom or a dad. Um, so talk through that and then maybe talk about some of the resources. I know you've got tons and tons of resources, um, available, lots of free resources. And then some, um, you've got, we'll talk about home-based revolution, um, your program that you have talk with us through all of that. Yeah, that's, this is my favorite subject. Well, besides talking about Jesus, right? (laughs) This it's talking about how we can, how we can live in ministry from home as we're homeschooling our kids, as we're living our lives, as we're, I mean, this is just, I think this is what we were designed for. Um, And we get to live in a world so cool as like having the internet at our disposal. And I know that some people are like, oh, the internet is so bad. Um, But I saw somebody do like a a little reel and then I'm gonna get into it. But I saw somebody do like a reel the other day and he was saying, it was something about like, what would Paul say to us? with the internet, with our ability to use the internet, right? To share the gospel, to be able to use it in ministry. What would Paul be saying? Like when he heard that we had the internet, like, oh my gosh. So how are you sharing on that? Right. Um, and, and then the person on the reel is like, I wasn't using it for that. Like, well, but why not? Right. Um, it's like, let's go back to being the first generation New Testament church with the resources we have right now. So anyway, um, yeah. I mean, it's just so cool, right? So anyway, uh, if you're already working from, or if you're already, you know, homeschooling and you're looking to create other income, that's what I would, what I would do in that space is don't try to add like a bunch of things, because if you were to search the term, you know, start a business from home, you're going to end up with, <laughs> easiness of um, million different options. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of like, God bless them, but like dude bros sitting on the front of rented Ferraris and stuff saying like, usually you make a bunch of money. And that's not like, that's not, we're not even after that, you know, like right. we're, we're after sustainability. How can mm-hmm. we sustain? How can we sustain? And then how can we do some kingdom growing stuff? If yeah. we have extra finances, right? Like that's, that really should be our hearts in my opinion. And, um, and so what the very first thing to be able to just kind of loosen the, the, um, the, the necktie, so to speak, um, is, is 
I think affiliate marketing, I think that's going to be your easiest go-to thing. And if mm -hmm. you're, if you're not sure what affiliate marketing is, quite frankly, it's, uh, you, you know, you've got things that you already use every day. Um, you've got maybe softwares that you're already using. Um, and what you do is you just Google the names of those things with the after at the end of it saying affiliate program, see what kind of affiliate programs you can sign up for. They'll give you a link. Mm -hmm. And then whenever you talk about them, then you're just going to say, oh, by the way, here's what I use. You know, here's the thing yeah. that's really helpful to me. By the way, here's the one that I use. And then you just share the link. And the thing is, is when people buy from that link, you get a kickback for that. But people mm -hmm. don't pay anymore to buy it. It's right. just the company is is paying you to be able to share it with people that it would be relevant to share it with, right? Because that's a business is always trying to market themselves or whatever. And um, so that's affiliate marketing in a nutshell. And I think that's the best way for people to start. I've been doing this for years and I teach multiple income streams from home, blah, blah, blah. Um, but for a lot of people, when they're starting off, I think starting off with just affiliate marketing, it's going to give you that um, it's freedom it's going to give you the breathing room because you can start to create income without having to create anything, right? right. That's the, when you see like, you know, start a business online, it's like, okay, now you need to create a course and now you need to write a book right. and now you need to do this and you need to, you know, go on Etsy and you need to make these printables and all of that stuff. Where in reality, you don't. Yeah. Um, in, in reality, you can support someone else who's doing that really well. Mm -hmm. And you could say, you know, like maybe even the curriculum that you use likely has an affiliate program, you know? You could say, hey, if you've been thinking about homeschooling, here's what we do. And then just kind of document that, you know? And then yeah. saying, here's the, here's the program that we like a lot. And so I think affiliate's mm -hmm. a great place to start. Yeah. Yeah. That is a good place to start. And where do you share those things? So as, I mean, I know where to share those things because we have a platform to share those. Um, and, and we're, we're grateful for that. Um, and you know, it's great for us because people are oftentimes looking for, uh, different, you know, curriculum and things like that. And so we, we share the things that we, we believe in, we trust to share with our audience. Um, but if someone were to Google that and say, you know, work from home, affiliate marketing or whatever, how, where would they share those things? Yeah. Don't Google it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say don't Google it because you're going to end up, a lot of people do affiliate marketing in a really weird and kind of yeah. skeezy way. Okay. Right, so right. Um, you don't want to be a skis ball or anything. Um, I actually have a free training, which you'll, I'm sure you'll have the link to in the yeah. show notes. I have a free hour long training where you can, you'll know what you need to know in that hour. Perfect. Um, and, uh, but where to share it, social media, mm -hmm. um, also just any, like, any relevant groups that you're in. I'm not telling you to build a website right off the bat, but right. uh, whenever you do decide to do that, you kind of just want to have fun. Maybe you and uh, one of your kids or all of your kids want to just have fun making a family website. Yeah. That's a good skill to have. Um, yeah. And so, you know, you can make a family website and then maybe all of the kids can take their rounds at writing blog posts about something that they love and then sharing an affiliate link in that blog post, right? I mean, there's just so many cool things that you can do. Social media is, yeah. so there's a, the way that I do affiliate marketing is there's a short game, there's a long game, and there's a legacy play, right? Mm -hmm. And so the short game is gonna be social media because social media typically has about a 72 hour cap on it. You mm -hmm. know, like whatever you post on social is going to be um, active and sort of in the algorithm for about 72 hours tops. Um, mm -hmm. sometimes there are outliers, but for the, for the most part, it's about 72 hours. Um, so that's a short game. So if you share something in social media, it's going to be a short game. Now I'm just going to give this caveat because here's where I get into the weeds. This is, I'm a strategist, yeah. right? So here's where we, here's where I start to talk a little bit fast, but, um, whenever you're sharing, like if you're sharing on a Facebook personal page, if you're sharing the link, what you want to do is you want to talk about in the post, you want to talk about you know, how it's changed the game for you, mm -hmm. how it's, you know, what it's done for you. And then share the actual link in the comments. Don't yeah. share the link in the post because the algorithm will shut it down. So right. in the comments will allow people to actually be able to see it. Okay. So, um, yeah. there's that, but then, so the long game is going to be your blog post 
your um, if you set up a YouTube channel, all mm-hmm. of these things that you're going to be setting up or that, you know, if you want to set them up are also beneficial for your kids to be learning because yeah. this is the future. Totally. Like I just wrote yeah. an article for Forbes not too long ago um, about the future of home-based businesses and where it's going. And mm-hmm. this, our kids need to know this so yeah. they don't even have to take part in the world. Right. They Like never. Um, it's, we do our own thing. We, the world affects us in no way. Um, right. and, and that's because of how we do our own things. And so I think it's important that our kids get to learn this too. But yeah. uh, the YouTube, the website, blogs, that's going to be the long game because that ends up being what people are searching for online. Mm-hmm. And then uh, whenever they search for it, they find you over time. And so right. that will continue to monetize over time. So that's your long play. And then yeah. also, I think I have another free thing, 90 days of content in 90 minutes that will show you how to find. And that's a, it's a free thing. And we'll have that in the notes too, I'm mm-hmm. sure. But that's another way for you to be able to know what to create for your people that they will be searching for. So that's another, it's right. really good training, but um, there's that. And then the legacy play is how can your kids and your family continue to be paid past when you've already gone to be with the Lord, right? And so that's oh, it. Wow. Not a lot of pay- people think about that part of it. And so yeah. that's where you're actually, you know, all your affiliate links and everything are all registered mm-hmm. under an LLC, right? That then you know, your family, it gets willed to your family. Like that's the, that's the legacy play on all of this, because Mm. if it's all under you and you're not there anymore, then they'll just stop paying you. Cause why would they keep paying you? Right. Um, But if it's all under an LLC, they got to keep paying. So yeah. And if well, and I appreciate that you say it takes time because I think often, you know, it's not like, okay, I've got a job now. I'm going to go to work and next Friday I'm going to get a paycheck for it. It does take time to build up these things. It takes time to build your audience. It takes time to build your platform um, and things like that. Let's talk really quickly about like those who are like, you know what? I don't understand computers. I don't understand social media. I don't know. You know, I don't want to be in front of a camera. I don't want to do video. Yeah. Um, what is something that those people can do? Because it can be scary when you're like, I really need to bring in income. I really want to stay home with my kids, yeah. but I only have maybe 10 or 15 hours a week max. Cause I'm homeschooling my kids and raising, you know, this next generation. And I also have no clue what to do, what I even want to do. How do you direct those people? Yeah. So what I what I want people to to know first and to dial in first is what I call their bat signal. And that's going to be like, who are you here to serve? Right. And it's not everybody. That's the thing. Yeah. It's it's the hardest thing for us as we start this to uh, to really focus in on who our people are that we're here to serve, right? And the Mm -hmm. way to really uh, easily uh, decipher that is to just put on a piece of paper, I have a notepad here, so I can kind of illustrate real quick. Put on a piece of paper, turn it, well, turn a notepad sideways. Then you'll put a line and then you'll put an arrow at the end of it, right? So you've got a line and then an arrow. The line uh, represents your life so far. The arrow represents that it ain't over yet, right? (laughs) <laughs> and so uh, on the line, what I want you to do is to put little hash marks for every time that you felt like your back was against the wall, for every time that you needed to figure something out, right? Like it was, it was of utmost importance. And a lot of times these days, um, it's going to be what were things that you were Googling until two or three in the morning because it mattered that much because hmm. you needed to figure out a solution so badly that it, it, you know, you were online uh, until all hours of the night. And sometimes this looks like, you know, uh, researching allergies. Sometimes it looks yeah. like that because, you know, your kids having these reactions and you're like, what gives, what am I yeah. supposed to do here? Um, and sometimes it's like, for me, it was researching how to build a business online. And then I saw all these dude bros and I'm like, that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't it. I know that's not it. But, um, so it, it's, it, you're going to have different times in your life that are going to be like these lines, right? Uh Um, on, you know, the hash marks and, uh, and what you'll do at that point is whenever you've got all your lines, don't do this activity for more than an hour. If you're doing it for more than an hour, it's paralysis. 
Okay. Uh You will paralyze yourself because you'll be like, I think there's more, but you've already got all the important ones on there. Okay. So don't worry about, I'm sure there's more, but you've got the important ones on there. And then I want you to look at all of them and I want you to see like which one you choose. So you're Mm going to choose one to be able to serve. You're going to say, okay, this this woman or this man or whoever you were then, right? I mean, if, if you're a woman now, you were a woman then. We don't, yeah. we don't need to have that conversation. <laughs> this is not the place for that conversation, right? But um, <laughs> anyway, um, what you're going to do is you're going to think, okay, who was I then? Uh-huh. And now that is who you're serving now. Hmm. Because that was you at the beginning of the search. Right, and now right. you're on the other side of the search. Right. And you know how to be able to help that person. And yeah. so if you don't really want to do a whole lot of computery stuff, I would, I would open up to learning some stuff yeah. and just some like, just primary social media. Like a, a, you yeah. can look at a lot of my free stuff and it kind of is teaching you that. So, yeah. it, I mean, I have a lot of women in their seventies, you know, that are even, that are doing my stuff and they're not super, you know, right. social media Computer mavens or wizards. anything, but yeah. it's just, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but you can also look for just like, groups in your area, meetups, you know, look through Eventbrite, see where you can go and help. And so you just show up where these, where these people would be and just see how you can be of service to them. And then if you want to, you know, create around that, like some different services and stuff like that, you can create around that, but it's, it's in service. You're in service to people. Martha, you literally hit that right on the head because let me tell you why. That's exactly what the Lord has done with our family. We were on the other side of homeschooling where we said we'd never homeschool because we didn't understand it. So we started to research. We started to talk to people. God called us to homeschooling. We homeschooled for a few years. We were still in the process of kind of figuring it out. And we were like, but all these other people are just like we were, you know, three years ago or four or five years ago. They're trying to figure it out. And we want to answer those questions for them. And we want to help them and encourage them and support them. And in the process of doing that, we're still learning along with them. So then we went and made a movie about it. And in the process of that, the Lord was like, "Mm, why don't you do a podcast too? And I was like, I don't even know how to do a podcast. I've listened to one podcast in my whole life. And God was like, yeah, but I will show you. And he did. And it's so cool. I I love that you said that because that's exactly, I've never actually put that together, but that's what God has done. And I'm not saying this like, you know, oh, pat me on the back. You know, we've been so great. No, no, it's all the work of the Lord. God took us from, We'll never homeschool to, you know, being in our seventh season of doing a homeschool podcast and helping walk people through homeschooling. And now we're getting ready to graduate our oldest daughter all by the grace of God. And he gets all the glory for it. And I think that's what's so beautiful is because he has allowed us to walk this journey. And going, going back to the walking, we've fallen many times. There's been so many times where we've tripped up and fallen and God's like, you know what? Nope, get back up. We're going to walk hand in hand. I'm going to lead you. You just follow and we're going to do this together. And so, um, so it's so great. Thank you for what you're doing and for how you are supporting others. And, and you guys don't be afraid of these things. I, I know it's scary. Trust me. There has <laughs> been so many times where I'm like, I have no clue what I'm doing, but Lord, I, I know you're calling me to do this. I'm going to trust you. And I'm willing to learn. So we will put everything, um, Martha in our show notes. So you can just click on them. You can see all of her free resources, um, check out her um, HBR. Um, it's her home-based revolution. Um, is it a course? Would you call that a course or like a, a, a community? Yeah, it's more of a program. It's a 12 okay. week. Like I walk people live through mm-hmm. it um, in 12 weeks. So we set up seven income streams in 12 weeks. And yeah. uh, by the end of the 12 weeks, they're set up. You're like ready, ready to roll. So, and then yeah. you can keep going through it again and again and don't have to pay any more for it. You can just keep going through it again and again. Yeah. If you want. Yeah. So, so she's got tons of resources. And again, of course, her book is the home-based revolution, not to be confused with the homeschool revolution, but just put them hand in hand, watch the movie, read her book and you'll be set. (laughs) Um, Of course, read your Bible first. That's the most important thing is look to the Lord, pray, ask the Lord what he wants um, for you and for your family and how he will continue to provide for you. Um, So much good stuff. Martha, one more time, tell people where uh, they can find you. What's your website? How can they find you on social media? Yeah. So I'm on social everywhere. Just the Martha Krejci. Um, not cause I think I'm a big deal just because there's literally another Martha Krejci. Right. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> with Martha.com is my website. So with Martha.com. Okay, great. And you have a, a new podcast as well. Um, tell do. us really quickly about your podcast. 
it's again home based revolution. I I like those words, right? So yeah. Uh, and it's about um, just strategies and. Um, so I'm I'm bringing people in that are doing it, and we're talking、yeah. about what's working for them, and it's just it's kind of just it's creating this entire community around home-based business and us just are living life on our terms and living our ministries. All right, we'll put those links in the show notes. You guys, thank you so much for listening, Martha. Thank you for being with us this week. It has been such a joy and a pleasure to chat with you.、Um, thanks for sharing your heart with us. God's doing amazing things through you, and、um, and you're helping the kingdom. Really are helping people to be able to serve the Lord, so we are grateful for that.、Um, stay tuned to the very end to hear what's coming up next week on the podcast. We love you guys so much, and again, you can find everything at our website, SchoolhouseRocked.com. Have a great rest of your day, and we will see you back here on Monday. Bye. Luke six forty, a disciple is not above his teacher. But everyone, when he is fully trained, will be like his teacher. If we are putting our kids out into the broken world without this foundation of here's how you here's how you learn, here's how you make decisions, here's how you know what the Bible says about things, here's what truth looks like, here's what it looks like to stand up to somebody who is saying something that you don't believe in. Right? Here's how you do that in a graceful and effective way, guys. There's there's so many different things that we need to be able to teach our kids. So、uh, when our kids become the teacher, then that's. Then that's something we can be proud of. But I'm just not like it. Just it scares me to death <laughs> to see what's going on in the world. And it's like sending our kids like lambs to the slaughter. I am just beyond thrilled to have chosen to homeschool. Am I still scared to death? Sure. Because do I still have the fear of I'm not a good teacher? Yeah, that's that's deep. That's deep in me. But am I going to let that get in the way of of what I believe is best for Nora? No. I'm gonna suck it up, sister. Right? I'm gonna make it happen because I believe that this is what we're supposed to do, and I believe that we can't be like the world. I believe we are called to be different. We're called to look different. We're called to behave differently, and this is what that looks like. And so, I want for you guys to watch it, to see it for what it is. I was coming into this. I was like, okay, am I going to homeschool? Am I not going to homeschool? And it was kind of, it was a serious thing, but it was a little bit more flippant. But whenever I watched that, I was like, oh no, I need to. Like, there's that. We had already made the decision to anyway, but still, like, oh no, this is much more serious than I even thought. Much more, much more serious than I even thought. This is of utmost importance. I love you guys. Adios. Bye bye. I have to be honest; it's not just mistakes I've seen other pe- people make. Even though I totally knew better, I found myself making some of those same mistakes. You know, I think that the first thing that we need to think about are, is why are these parenting、uh, mistakes happening? Why are parents using some of these faulty child training methods?、Um, because there's just so many of those faulty training methods out there, and what I've discovered to be the common denominator in all of them. Is an emphasis on a behavioral change instead of a heart change.、Hmm. We need to remember that our goal is not just to get our children to outwardly comply, but、right. to really reach their hearts with the gospel of Christ. And when we adopt these popular but deceptive parenting philosophies and methods that the world offers, where the goal really is just for behavior modification, we miss the issues of the heart and the whole purpose of biblical discipline. 